Hey everybody, welcome. I'm Janak Goyal and in this presentation I will talk about simplified anatomical concepts for sonographic examination of the knee. The sonographic examination of the knee is focused to the structures based on clinical impression. But for learning and teaching purpose, the examination of the knee is performed from four different quadrants, anterior, posterior, medial, and lateral. The skeletal landmarks are important for proper sonographic examination of musculoskeletal system. Knee joint consists of three articulation, the tibiofemoral, patellofemoral, and a synovial articulation between the upper end of tibia and the upper end of fibula. Let's review all important skeletal landmarks and soft tissue structures of the knee joint. The lower end of femur has two large condyles, lateral and medial, which are united anteriorly and separated posteriorly by a deep intercondylar fossa. The articular surface of the condyles is divided into patellar and the tibial areas. The patellar articular surface on the lateral condyle projects further forward than that on the medial condyle. The tibial articular surfaces are continuous with the patellar surface anteriorly and divided by the intercondylar fossa posteriorly. Medial and lateral epicondyles are the summits of medial and lateral condyle of femur. The posterior surface of the lower end of the body of the femur has a flattened triangular popliteal surface which is bounded by medial and lateral supracondylar lines. The adductor twercle is located on the posterior superior aspect of the medial condyle and it gives attachment to the adductor magnus. The lateral head of gastrocnemius is attached to a small depression immediately above the lateral epicondyle and a sesamoid bone pabala is commonly found in the attachment of the lateral head of gastrocnemius. The upper end of tibia is divided into the medial and lateral condyles. The upper surface of the condyles is separated by an intercondylar area which is narrow centrally and wider anteriorly and posteriorly. Lateral and medial intercondylar twercles project from the narrow central part of the intercondylar area forming an intercondylar eminence. The intercondylar area gives attachment to the cruciate ligaments and the horns of nisci. The articular surface of the medial condyle is oval in shape and that of the lateral condyle is nearly circular in shape. Gurdy's twercle is a prominence on the lateral side of the anterior margin of lateral condyle of tibia which gives attachment to iliotibial band. Anteriorly, a roughened area of the condyles is continuous below with the tibial tuberosity. On the posterior lateral surface of the lateral condyle of tibia, there is a flat facet for articulation with the head of fibula. On the posterior medial aspect of medial condyle of tibia, there is a groove for the attachment of the tendon of semimembranosus. Let's have another look on the medial side of the knee. The ductor twercle which gives attachment to the ductor magnus is seen proximal to the medial epicondyle. Immediately proximal to the ductor twercle, medial supracondylar ridge is blunted for crossing of the femoral artery to the popliteal fossa where it becomes a popliteal artery. The posterior medial aspect of the medial condyle of tibia has a groove for the attachment of a semimembranosus tendon as already mentioned. On the lateral side of the knee, 
a groove separates lateral epicondyle from the articular area. The tendon of popliteus is attached to a fossa on the anterior part of the groove just below the lateral epicondyle. Popliteus tendon occupies the groove when the knee is flexed. The fibular collateral ligament is attached to lateral epicondyle proximal to the groove for the popliteus. Lateral head of gastrocnemius is attached to a small depression immediately above the lateral epicondyle and a sesamoid bone, pavella, can be seen in the tendon of the lateral head of gastrocnemius. The head of fibula articulates with the lateral condyle of tibia at its posterior lateral aspect right here. The fibular collateral ligament is attached to the lateral femoral epicondyle proximal to the popliteal groove and to the head of fibula. The fibular collateral ligament is separated from the joint capsule by fat and inferior lateral genical vessels and nerves. Now, the tibial collateral ligament is a broad flat band nearer the back of the knee joint. It extends from the medial epicondyle immediately distal to adductor torcal and to the medial tibial condyle and the adjacent part of the shaft of tibia. It slopes anteriorly as it descends to the posterior medial surface of the tibial shaft where it is crossed by the tendon of sartorius, gracilis and semitendinosus. The anterior cruciate ligament is attached to the tibia in front of the intercondylar eminence between two nisci and to the medial aspect of the lateral condyle of femur and the posterior cruciate ligament is attached to the upper margin of tibia in the groove between the two condyles behind the medial and lateral meniscus and to the lateral aspect of the medial condyle of femur. The fibrous capsule is thin and extensive at the back but short and thick on the sides and is replaced by the patellar tendon, patella and quadriceps tendon in front. Posteriorly, the capsule is attached proximal to the posterior margins of femoral condyles and the intercondylar fossa and distally to the posterior margins of tibial condyles and the intercondylar area. Medially, the capsule is attached to the femoral and the tibial condyles just beyond their articular margins and blends with the tibial collateral ligament. Laterally, the capsule is attached to the femur above the popliteus and descends over its tendon to the tibial condyle. Popliteus muscle emerges through an opening in the joint capsule immediately above the proximal tibiofibular joint. The fibular collateral ligament is separated from the capsule by fat and inferior lateral genicular vessels and nerve. Anteriorly, the, the capsule follows the lines on the tibia downwards to the sides of tibial tuberosity and it will blend with the patellar tendon on the sides of patella and on the quadriceps tendon. The synovial lining of the knee is very complex and hard to understand. Anteriorly, the synovial lining forms a large suprapatellar bursa or suprapatellar recess between the quadriceps morus tendon and the femoral shaft and also between two fat pads, the prefemoral fat pad and the suprapatellar fat pad. The bursa is an extension of the joint cavity and it extends proximally about the hand's breadth above the superior pole of patella. Alongside the patella, the membrane extends under the aponeurosis of vastus medialis and vastus lateralis. 
distal to patella, the synovial membrane is separated from patellar tendon by an infrapatellar fat pad. Under the fat pad, the membrane projects into the joint cavity as two alar folds. The folds converge posteriorly to form a single infrapatellar plica, so called ligamentum mucosum, which curves posteriorly and is attached in the femoral intercondylar fossa. The synovial membrane almost surrounds the cruciate ligaments. It is reflected posteriorly from the posterior cruciate ligament to the adjoining parts of the capsule. So the intercondylar part of the fibrous capsule posteriorly has no synovial lining because of this reflection. Anteriorly, the superficial structures of the knee include quadriceps morus tendon, patella, patellar tendon, medial and lateral retinacula. The quadriceps tendon is a three-layered structure formed by rectus morus and the middle layer formed by vastus medialis and vastus lateralis and the deep layer is formed by vastus intermedius. Here is a drawing of the sagittal section of the right knee through the intercondylar fossa. It shows the structures which are commonly seen on the sonographic examination of the knee. The structures seen above the patella in the suprapatellar region are skin, subtunis tissue, patellar tendon, patella, suprapatellar fat pad, suprapatellar recess, prefemoral fat pad, and the femoral cortex. And in the infrapatellar region, again, you see skin, subtunis tissue, patellar tendon, half as fat pad, and the femoral condyle. The structures seen on the posterior aspect of the knee on the medial side are semimembranosus and semitendinosus medially and the medial head of gastrocnemius relatively laterally and you will see a semimembranosus gastrocnemius bursa located in a space between the semimembranosus tendon and the medial head of gastrocnemius. The tendons of biceps femoris and the plantaris and along with the tendon of lateral head of gastrocnemius are seen on the lateral side of the posterior view. The neurovascular structures are located in the middle of uh, the popliteal fossa and a sesamoid bone called pabella can be seen in the tendon of the lateral head of gastrocnemius. The posterior cruciate ligament can also be evaluated on long axis on the posterior view. The posterior cruciate ligament is attached to the posterior margin of the upper surface of the tibia in a groove between two condyles behind the posterior attachment of the medial and lateral meniscus. And to the lateral surface of the medial condyle of femur. The structures for sonographic examination of the medial side of the knee include the medial retinaculum, the medial collateral ligament deep to pes answering tendon and the pes answering tendon. Here in this diagram the only one component of pest sensing tendon is shown, the rest of the components will be shown in the next uh, diagram. And here is the tendon of semi tendinosis coming from the posterior aspect of the thigh behind the tendon of semi membranosus and it is attached to the medial surface of the tibia along with the other tendons, sartorius and gracilis. The pes answering bursa lies deep to the pes answering tendon. Here is your pes answering tendon which is completed by the tendon of sartorius coming from in front and the tendon of gracilis descending straight down completing the pes answering tendon. 
the soft tissue structures seen on the lateral side of the knee from anterior to posterior include the lateral retinaculum, iliotibial band inserting on to girdis torcal on the lateral condyle of tibia, lateral collateral ligament extending between the head of fibula and the lateral condyle of femur, the tendon of popliteus in the groove deep to the attachment of lateral collateral ligament to the lateral condyle of femur. The most posterior structure on the lateral aspect of the knee is biceps femoris tendon inserting to the head of fibula.